All right, so our last screencast may have felt like a lot, and uh, that's because it was um, the Hearts Comp Kid. And so remember, that was building off the Spogel that you did. And so um, it's worth taking a little bit of time to just kind of kind of go back through that Spogel and, and run it past what you learned from the screencast and just kind of put it all together, try and make sense of the heart. Um, here's a couple other things I'd recommend. This video recap uh, is a video you can click in the notes, and um, I think it does a really good job just kind of going through it all. Um, you know, you could just look at this picture and, and try and identify the four chambers, the two atria, the two ventricle, the four valves, the atrioventricular valves, the semilunar valves, and this one that goes to the aorta, uh, the major blood vessels that uh, exit and enter <laughs> the heart, and just kind of go through it all. Um, and then maybe pause and see if you can um, label all these different parts of the heart, and even better, um, get out some red and blue colored markers or pens or whatever, and uh, try and diagram the flow of blood through there. Um, I think it's worth doing. Um, we're gonna have another review activity tomorrow and uh, the next day too, all on the heart. Um, but the more you kind of keep up with things, the better life will be for you. So take a moment um, and answer, uh, label those. And then uh, when you'd like, you can go and find this in the notes or it's right here. There's the answers, but don't, don't look yet. Just don't, okay. Um, so with this screencast, we're going to talk about another aspect of the heart, which is an electrocardiogram. So in pretty much every TV show ever created, um, usually after a few seasons, when things are starting to get stale, they, they try and stir things up by almost killing off a character. Um, and you always see them in the hospital bed, and there's this machine going in the background, and it's going beep, beep, beep. And um, it's just kind of part of the background of the show. Um, but if you zoom in on those beeps, um, you'll see that they represent what's called an electrocardiogram. And so our task today is to start to understand what that is and how it's measured. So an electrocardiogram um, is actually better known as an ECG, or sometimes it's called an EKG. It means the same thing. Um, EKG is German for electrocardiogram, um, and then this is the English electrocardiogram. So. Um, pretty much the same thing. And in both, uh, either name, um, all it is, is it's a measure of the heart's electrical activity. And you may be thinking, wait, electrical activity in the heart? And remember, action potentials are simply electrical activity. It's just a movement of charged particles. Um, and, and muscle, as we've seen, has uh, action potentials running through it uh, when they're contracting. And so all we're doing is we're measuring the action potentials as they kind of move through the muscle of the heart. That's what an electrocardiogram is. So how does it work? How does the activity of the heart represent this pattern? So on the big screen you see at the hospital, it's just kind of beep, 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 and each little, each little uh, repetition of the same pattern represents a different heartbeat. If you zoom in on one of those, it kind of looks like this. There's this little bump called the P wave. There's this bigger bump called the QRS complex and then an intermediate bump called the T wave. What's going on? Well, to understand, there's uh, two terms we need to understand. Systole refers to the contraction phase of the heartbeat. And note that there is atrial systole when the atria are <laughs> contracting, and then ventricular systole when the ventricles <laughs> are constrict, uh, constricting. Diastole is the relaxation phase of the heartbeat. And again, there's atrial diastole, sorry, diastole. Um, there's atrial diastole when the atria are relaxed and the ventricular diastole where the ventricles are relaxed. And so you can think of the heartbeat as atria, ventricles, atria, ventricles, um, as the heart beats. Um, so the controller of all this activity is the sinoatrial node, sometimes called the SA node. And um, what the SA node is, it's a patch of cells up here in the right atrium, and it's the natural pacemaker of the heart. These cells have the ability to spontaneously generate an action potential. If you take some of these cells out, put them in a Petri dish, they will spontaneously um, send electrical uh, electrical signals, action potentials, which is pretty cool. 
Um, and so this is why if you actually do um, heart surgery, if you if you remove the heart without slowing it down first, it will actually it'll keep pumping um, outside the body for a little while as long as it has oxygen and nutrients. And that's because of these spontaneous SA node cells, which is pretty cool. Um, so the SA node, um, I should go back, initiates action potentials. And those signals spread throughout the two atria and cause those atria to contract. Once they've contracted, that signal is picked up by this structure right here called the atrioventricular node or the AV node. This picks up that signal and then relays it to the ventricles, causing them to contract. So basically the SA node starts this signal, causes the atria to contract, and then the AV node picks it up, relays the message to the ventricles and causes them to contract. Lup, dup, lup, dup, like that. Um, and what's interesting about the AV node is it's relatively slow and inefficient at transferring that signal. And that's actually a good thing because we want the atria to contract and pump all the blood from the atria into those ventricles. And so by being slow, it gives the blood time to move from the atria to those ventricles so that when the ventricles do contract, the blood is in there and it gets launched out through these blood vessels. So again, recap the process. The SA node causes the atria to contract, which is systole. The AV node relays that signal to the ventricles, causing them to contract, which is ventricular systole. And so the ECG is simply measuring this electrical activity. And so that first little bump, that P wave, is the atria contracting. So remember, um, the atria are muscles, it's cardiac muscle. Action potentials are traveling through that muscle in order to cause them to contract. And so action potential is sodium ions rushing in, potassium ions rushing out, it's electrical activity. We're just measuring that electrical activity and it's this little bump of the P wave. Um, the QRS complex is where the ventricles contract. And the, the, you know, that's this larger peak. And you may wonder, well, why is this such a much, so much larger um, a peak than that P wave? And there's two reasons for that. One reason is that the QRS complex represents the contraction of the ventricles and the ventricles are thicker. There's more muscle, which means there's more electrical activity, which means it's a bigger peak. The other reason is the atria are in diastole at this point as well. And so part of this big peak is the ventricles contracting. Another part of the peak is the atria essentially resetting themselves so that they can fire new action potentials. Maybe you remember when we talked about the nervous system, after an action potential, um, the cells kind of reset. That sodium potassium um, pump transports the sodium potassium ions back where they started. That's electrical activity too, and it's kind of embedded in there. So it's the ventricular systole and the atrial diastole in that. The T wave then is essentially the um, diastole for the ventricles. And um, so again, as those cells reset, they're moving those ions back to where they started from after the action potential, and then that kind of causes that little T wave. So every single time your heart beats, it creates this pattern of electrical activity. The P wave is the LUP of the atrial contracting. The QRS is the DUP of the ventricles contracting. LUP DUP recover, LUP DUP recover, LUP DUP recover, LUP DUP recover, and so on. And so that's what that pattern should look like. So here's two questions. Um, these would be good little recap questions to go over. Um, the next two days, you're basically just going to be reviewing and working with this information. Um, there's going to be a little reading that kind of goes through the ECG stuff I just discussed in a little bit more detail. Um, there's going to be what was the heart dissection lab, um, but you actually don't need to dissect a heart to do it, but it has a lot of really good questions that review and reinforce what you've learned about the heart. So hopefully, if this is a little bit fuzzy uh, right now, the next two days will help tie it together. And then, of course, there's going to be a Schoology quiz soon to, to really make sure you got it all. So that's all I got for now. Thanks for watching.